Hey guys, so I'm here to talk about Hulking Island, and I want to make it clear that I don't actually hate this arc. People that know me seem to think I hate it. I don't. I actually think it had gotten pretty damn good lately. I really have been enjoying it, but I feel like there's an effort from Oda to continue a formula I, with the Straw Hat winning and surviving that I just don't agree with. I honestly don't think any of the stuff that has been happening makes a ton of sense in the pre-established narrative. First of all, I don't think the Straw Hat should be winning any fight for Big Mom, and it's starting to look like he's plot devising Big Mom's power down to the point where she would lose. Now, of course, the point of logic here is that Big Mom had gone like eight hours without eating, and she's getting weaker. It isn't out of nowhere, this happens to Luffy as well, but it still bothers me, and I don't think it should happen. There is no reason for Big Mom to be beating, to not be beating the Straw Hat. The power gap is so big, a half-dead Big Mom should be able to beat the Straw Hat. Just like even if Luffy didn't eat for a whole week, he would still kick my ass or kick your ass. That's the point, the power gap is ginormous. The fact that Nami and Brooke are landing hits on Big Mom while cool, and we let other the audience go, oh shit, Nami's awesome, oh shit, Brooke is awesome. It does, in the narrative, not really, it doesn't appeal to me. I don't like it. So I didn't like that in the latest chapter. I also feel that our kid had too many, oh shit, we're ending, oh no, no. There's more. Oh no, real the thing. He's like, oh, we're ending the arc. No, no, we're not done yet. And that's what Oda's been doing lately. A great example of this is the wedding between Sanji and uh, Pudding. And I was like, okay, Luffy and Big Mom will have a scuffle. Maybe a King Kong gun. Or something like that. Maybe Luffy will get a couple King Kong guns in. They'll scuffle a bit. Luffy may hold her off for like two minutes. And then they'll book it off Hulking Island. And the arc will end. And we'll go to Wado. We'll get, and we'll all get the stuff we actually give a shit about. Like Kaido. <laughs> and then that's actually gonna happen. <laughs> uh, no, no. There's, there's more. There's more. There's more. And uh. But no, but the point is that it's wholeheartedly agreed that the seducing woods, it's a bad. Like everything in the seducing woods, bar but cracker fight, is just not interesting. Bland, boring, and you have stuff like Nami being surprised by things that shouldn't surprise her at this point. You have uh, just Chopper, Nami, and Brooke, and Luffy, all that just kind of screwing around, and it just isn't good content. I mean, I honestly haven't reread The Juicy Woods, so my memory on that is a little fuzzy, but honestly, the I have no reason to want to read it. Also, the clone thing with Brulee was just a stupid snide plot. I'm sorry, but honestly, that was more just, I remember I was reading that, I was like, what the hell am I reading? What is this crap? It was, it was really bad. And that was like two years ago, and I remember reading that. You can probably find my live reaction. I won't have a webcam, but you can probably find it on my channel. I'm like, what the hell is this garbage? The chats are terrible. I mean, you, you have a lot of bad stuff in this art that is just bad storytelling that you wouldn't expect from Oda. You also have pudding. Let's talk about pudding for a minute. I despise pudding. I hate him. I, really, I think I did a video on Pudding like a, like a month or two ago, and I literally titled it, Pudding D Bits. I, I literally titled it because I hate her so much. I hate Pudding. I think he's a, one of the worst characters or ever written. I actually hate her more than Rebecca, but my reason for hating Rebecca was more superficial. I didn't like her. And the reason I didn't like Rebecca was because I thought she was kind of annoying, and I thought she didn't add much to the overall narrative. Pudding I just don't like. Like, putting out legitimately when she's on screen, I'm actually like, oh my god, I want to stop reading. Rebecca was more like a joke. Rebecca was a joke. Yeah, Rebecca was like Nyamcha or Kiba. She was a joke that people could actually have fun making fun of. I just don't like Pudding. Let me explain why. Pudding was an amazing villain. Pudding was 
Oda taking all of his villain views and putting them into a character. But then for some reason, this Oda doesn't seem to be able to write an actual evil female character. Like, uh, that, that is just straight up a complete evil bitch, which he was doing amazingly. Pudding was like, oh, I'm going to trick Donji to thinking I'm in love with him, and we'll get to the altar, he'll be willing to marry me, and I'll shoot him in the back of the his, his head and kill his entire family. I mean, Pudding was a horrible, horrible person, and I liked it. Pudding was great. Her facial expression, the way Oda drew her, was amazing. I loved her, her expression. They were so evil and filled with malice and hate, and it was great. And then you have this. Oh my god. One is stereotyped, this is incredible stereo stereotypical female. I don't like it. I think it stereotypes women a lot. But he compliments, he says her forehead and her third eye is beautiful. And then she falls in love with Sanji. And now you have this really shitty gag where she's like, oh, I love you, Sanji. But she's also a complete bitch to everybody else. And she has like a split personality going back and forth between the two. And it's just not funny. But all that, Pudding was not being set up as a character to be redeemed. Pudding was set up in this arc as an evil, evil character. When all of a sudden, it's like, your third eye is pretty. Oh my god, I'm in love with Donji. Venmo. It's like... Oda. That's not... You can't expect me to like Pudding. You don't expect me to be feel bad for somebody. That, was real, that, that manipulated somebody the way putting this Donji emotionally and was then going to shoot him through the head of the altar. All because her mama wanted her to. And because she was obeying her captain's order. Don't expect me to like somebody like that. And it's not as if she had to obey Big Mom. He, well, I mean, Big Mom with the Nyoko. But I mean, she could have said no. She could have just said, kill me. This is, like, horrible, I want nothing to do with it. But no, he was just like, okay, sound fun. She was excited. She was enjoying the idea of destroying Sanji. And oh my god, I hate Pudding so much. I hate her, I hate her, I hate her. And it just, and you go back to, and Oda is really hammering the gag in. It's whenever she's on screen. It's like, want to know what makes Nami disgusting with money? funny and make you want to know what make Nami a, a, a Nami is kind of a bitch let's be honest that's the whole point of her character she's very unlikable she isn't somebody you would want to be friends with or you would want to be around at all really she's a, not a good person that's the whole point but she is likable this works because Nami has other redeeming traits that her Oda focuses on her great traits that all the other girls have their friendship, kindness, all that nonsense. And he makes her obsession with money and her thievery a gag. So every once in a while, when money comes into the picture, you'll have Nami freak out over it. And but then you'll also have moments like on Zo, where she's like, oh man, they're touching Robin, I'll rip them apart limb from limb and crucify them. It's like, he's that makes you likable. She's like, if anybody's touching my friend, I'm gonna kill him. And that's likable. And then her gag with money that people don't necessarily like very much is while it's funny, doesn't does it make her a likable person, it only comes up once in a while. You are putting gag with her being going from loving Sanji, loving wife to Sanji to complete evil bitch that will kill a million people in a heartbeat in every chapter. It's all the time and it's getting really annoying. Now, I'm not sure if Oda is going for some, like, personality disorder thing. If she is, he's doing a really bad job at representing a real-life disorder, and he's making it appear as a joke. So I hope to God Oda is actually trying to represent some sort of personality disorder, because if she is, my God, Oda, you are a horrible human being. Because this is, this, that is offensive on so many levels. Like, that's some Logan Paul stuff right there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah I'm, yeah, I'm not getting into that. But the point is, is that it just, it's so unlikable on putting parts. She's so unlikable, and the gag isn't funny. Now, you may find the gag funny. You might think it's the most freaking hilarious thing you've ever seen. Good for you, if you find the pudding thing funny. Good for you, 
I don't think it's funny. And it bothers me. And I hate it. But then there is probably, in my opinion, one of the worst parts of this arc, which is the way it was set up. I think Oda's mistake was that he put them in a situation where we don't really want them to win. In all the other arcs, we wanted to see Luffy be Crocodile. We wanted to see Luffy to see Dolphamingo. We wanted to see Luffy to stay there. But Yoko has been hyped up so much, and Luffy has been made to seem so significantly weaker than them. We as an audience are actually turning around and going, eh, Luffy shouldn't win. Luffy not strong enough. I want Luffy to lose. And it's introducing Captain Curry, who, I'll get to Captain Curry later, is so awesome, we want Captain Curry to win. Ugh. And it just makes, put, and it just makes this arc what is the point of this arc? We don't want Luffy to beat Big Mom. Well, I originally the point of the arc was go in, get Sanji, get out. And it was going, and we thought it was going to be something different. Uh, maybe like an impel down style infiltration arc. But no. That's not what Oda did. That's not what Oda went for, and that bothered me. Because Oda could have done so much more with this. It could have been a nice, clever infiltration arc with Luffy being all sneaky because he knows he can't win. But, but no. We, and using Nami's thievery skill and broke ghost form. You could have done so much with this. His soul projection. His actual projection. And, and no. No, Oda. And it's just this arc of run, run, of... Get, get, get the whole kick on Everything up until arrive into the seducing woods is 10 out of 10. Then you have the seducing wood, which is bad. Then you have Luffy with your cracker, which is decent. Pretty good stuff there. I really like the Luffy and Nami tag team on Kata Kurt, on, on Cracker. Then you have the wedding. Then you have all the Kester stuff. I did not like the stuff while they were Kester. I felt it dragged. I felt it was slow paced. I didn't think it was interesting. I didn't like it, especially retrospectively. You know, all the evil pudding stuff is now rendered worthless because it actually turned out to be good. And it was not a good redemption arc. And that's really like how the redemption arc. He kind of just turned around and said, I'm good now. Let's do some good shit. He doesn't even have the redemption, he even have the redemption arc where he tries to earn redemption. He kind of just had it. In a sense, it's like Sasuke done badly, essentially. Is that like Sasuke and Naruto? It, it, you're know, like if you're in Naruto, Naruto not getting in fight. Sasuke has just been like, yeah, I like you now, Naruto. Let's be best friends. Yeah. And, and, and then we just got the ending we got. And this is a man in Naruto without that without that five chapter Naruto and Sasuke fight. Like, this 99 and somehow it still happens. And then Sasuke and Naruto both have their arms, and it's just that. It would be so bad. And it's like, wait, what? It's in jarring. It is a slap. It's essentially what, how I view pudding. It's like, oh, pudding good now, apparently. So I didn't like that. I actually I hated that. That was really bad writing, guys. That was really bad. But then there was the wedding, and everybody got hyped. I would type everyone. You thought that the climax. And then Oda wrote it at the middle of the arc, had more running. Which had bullshit. Like Nami doing more damage to Big Mom than Luffy can. I get that the plot explains it, but uh, it doesn't even get it gives Nami a cool moment, but it's not even really a, Na a Nami moment because she's using another character's power to do it. And it's not like a character using a demon inside him. She's literally taking Big Mom's homie Zeus. Using Zeus to do a lightning bolt and then striking Big Mom with Big Mom's own power. Like what? That, that's not even a Nami moment. It's like a Nami Zeus to Big Mom hurt herself massacre. I don't know what it is, but it's barely a moment for Nami. Because it's not Nami. It's Nami using somebody else's power to make herself awesome. That isn't Nami's feat. So that's not cool. Um. But time for that, then it was just them running for a kind of chapter. We did have one thing I liked though, Pedro's death. Pedro's death was awesome. Pedro's death was great. I think 
danger of death, death at the moment. God, Oda, if it's like Pelt, if it is, if you pull a Pelt, Oda, this arc will be the worst arc in One Piece. I promise. My, it will be my least favorite arc in all of One Piece. I swear to God, Oda, don't repeat your mistake with Pelt. But that was good because it added a sense of danger to the arc. Like, that people could actually die. And it's the first death we got in One Piece in a while. But I also feel that it wasn't, it didn't hit home as much as any of the other deaths did. I thought like this is the first time Oda may have killed somebody just for mistake of plot or killing them off, but n not for emotional payoff. Ace, Whitebeard, Sabo, Belmere, uh, Olvia, Tom, they all had, uh, if, uh, Brooke's entire crew, all of that had emotional payoff. It was built up to, it felt there. That was kind of just a part of it. That wasn't, like, the main, that was, like, one of the biggest parts of the arc. But, like, I honestly don't repeat, it's not glorious enough of a death for it to be the main thing I think about when I see a Hulky Island. When I think of Hulky Island, I see a Luffy with Takata Curry. Honestly, what I would have done was have Pedro help Luffy in a Takata Curry fight. Maybe show up, take a blow for Luffy, something like that. Or maybe hold, or maybe you could have had Pedro hold Takata Curry off for the 10 minutes until Gear 4 3 charge or something. I don't know. But I feel like maybe tying it into the thing that everybody cares about would have been good. You know, let's be honest, that's like two months. All people give a crap about it, Kata Curry versus Luffy. But, uh, the Kata Curry and Luffy begin their epic battle. Then those two fight. Everything involving that is good. I love Kata Curry the character. I think he's the best character in this arc. Honestly, by far. Um, I think he's actually my favorite character, one of my favorite characters in the story in general at this point. I'm honestly sort of rooting for him in this fight, which is weird. I'm almost always rooting for Luffy, but I like Kata Curry so much, I'm kind of like, yeah, I wouldn't mind the Kata Curry one day. Kata Curry really cool. I honestly don't think I'd mind the Kata Curry one. But the problem with this arc, in the grand scheme of contrived stupid crap, is that it's the four water. Let's be honest, not the main problem. Originally, we were like, okay, we're gonna go in, we're gonna learn about Big Mom, we're gonna grab Sanji, we're gonna get out. People were like, people were saying this arc would be like 30 chapters. If you go back, well, like, this arc will only be like 30 chapters. Even I would say this arc won't be that long. It'll be nice and quick. Mind you, I just like to point out, I just like to point out, this arc is getting kind of long. It's been going on for like 50 chapters now. I'll look up your that number, or maybe I'll post it on frame. But, uh, yeah, this arc has been going on for a long time, and that's the problem. Because Oda said he never wants to do another arc as long as Drex Rosa again. And, I don't know, guys. This arc has been going on a while, a long, long time. Mm, over a year. This arc started in 2016, it's 2018 now. Over a year. And we're still going. And then we have... But so the problem is that everybody wants Wano. Because let's be honest, Wano have been being hyped up. For years. Kaido had been hyped up. Since Kaido, Smiley, Dolphamingo. So all this stuff has been hyped up since like 2007. The first mention of Kaido and Dolphamingo Officially, well, the first mention of Kaido was in Water 7, but the first hint to any of this we got of what was going on with Kaido and Dopamingo was way back in the Bodiaka Palaga. And that's the problem. This arc has been going on way too long. Like, holy crap, this arc has been going on forever. I mean, this storyline. And we're all, we're finally there. We're about to reach the climax of the story of this interconnecting story spanning hundreds of chapters. The Wano Kuni arc. And we're gonna get to see Zoro fight at full power. Something, mind you, some of you may not realize this, especially if you just caught up, but some people I know. But 
For people that have been reading One Piece since the former time, get they have been waiting since Gabodi Archipelago. No. Okay, Gabodi didn't even count because it was up with Kizaru. Because Kizaru was like slamming them. The last time Zoro had an actual fight with Brother Bark in like 2008, 10 years ago. Every other tight fight he's had since then has either been he completely outclassed by his opponent, or he is completely outclassing his opponent. And don't give me any crap that he has trouble with pick up. He had trouble with Pink Up because he didn't know where Pink Up was. He didn't know where the original body was. He was way stronger than Pink Up. And you know it. The point is, and then don't even get me started on Pitman Island and Monet. Monet, he was just like Great Dragon Shock. Win. And then, oh my god, Oda. And then on Pitman Island, he's a Dak Porter. You couldn't even kill my boredom. Granted, in order to defend Fifthman Island is an arc. That's the purpose of the arc. It's much, it's much like most anime arcs after Battalion gets an anime. It meant to display how powerful these characters are now. The problem I have with all of it is that it's just stupid how long we've been waiting for this. And every year, editors have been teasing us, Wanna, Wanna, Wanna. 2015 was supposed to be the year of Sanji. Whether or not it was the year of Sanji was debatable. No, 2017, I think, was supposed to be the year of Sanji. But here, 2016 or 2017, I don't even remember at this point. We're supposed to be the year of Sanji. And then we were supposed to get. Yeah, 2017 was the year of Sanji. And then we were supposed to get the greatest arc in the theory. Wano. Like many people are thinking of the best arc in the theory, they'd have Kaido in it, and Kaido's awesome. What we've seen of him is so good. And honestly, I'm excited for Wano, but this arc has really killed a lot of my hype. Because Oda has made a lot of storytelling decisions I don't agree with. Now, I want to preface it by saying this is all just my opinion. None of this is factual. If you disagree with this, good for you. But this is all just my opinion. And yeah, I think there is some good stuff in there. But stuff with Capone, good. But stuff with uh, Brooke. Brook is the MVP of Hulking Island. Brook is awesome. Brook, all the time with Brook fighting my homies and Brook taking on Big Mom. Brook is so damn good. And then there's uh, oh, then, then there's uh, Luffy and Captain Curry owning this arc. I think uh, that fight is just rolling over it. You have Big Mom's backstory, which is just. I mean, I don't even know what Big Mom's backstory is. It's disturbing. See, it's Big Mom a cat. Big Mom's a freaking cannibal. And he's like 10, according to her backstory. And you're like, what the hell was that crap? But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. And just, uh, once again, I put a preference to just my opinion. If you disagree, tell me why in the comments. I honestly don't think this is the worst arc in one page. I think there's a lot of storytelling flaws in it. I feel like this arc is showcasing Oda's weaknesses as a writer the most. I really feel like that. I feel like Oda, is, this arc showcases his weaknesses as a writer. Well, something like Low or Drift Rosa or Punk Hazard or Marine Ford or Impel Down, Skabodi or Arlong Park all showcase a great point. This arc is a lot of his fall hits. This, this arc is a lot of his issues I have with him as a writer. Now, if you guys enjoyed, if you did, leave it a like, subscribe for more videos like this. Tell me what you thought of the use of a camera in this video. If you enjoyed it, tell me, and I'll try to use more of it. I just got it. It's really nice. Uh, there may be a glare from the light from the camera on my sunglasses. I actually don't know how to turn the flash light on the camera off yet. You know, I literally just got it on Christmas, and I have only recorded it a few videos with it, and this is the first one I've done at night, as you can see. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like the video you did, subscribe for more videos. The one page naked. Signing out. Have a great day.